The house we bought was somewhat old and not stable. So we knew we were always going to take that house down and build a new house. And in the two years of working with Andy at EnviroChector, we went through quite a few evolutions of the design of the house. The passive house standard is designed to help you build a house that is comfortable to live in and cheap to operate. We didn't originally set out to build a certified passive house because we are sandwiched between a quite a busy road and a train line. It meant that we had to meet noise abatement requirements. We were required to have a ducted air ventilation system because you can only meet the noise abatement requirements if your windows are closed and you also have to meet ventilation requirements. So we made the choice to go all the way to Passive House to buy triple glazed windows that sealed to use a heat recovery ventilation system rather than a traditional air conditioner. The house is on a fairly large block of land and the large tallowwood tree is almost exactly in the centre of the land, which is far from ideal when you're trying to design a new house. The floor plan of the house has basically been squished between the tallowwood tree and the council setbacks to the busy road out of the front. And while in some ways that was a big design constraint, it was also a huge opportunity that enabled us to keep the house footprint very compact and have given us a two-storey design. And that's made achieving the passive house standard a lot easier than if we had a single-storey design, but has also kept the construction costs down because we've got less envelope area. The overall design of the house in many ways is traditional passive solar. So we've orientated everything to the north and we've got nearly all of the glazing on the northern side. We've used both eaves and fixed shading devices to control the summer sun and also the large window downstairs has an external blind so there's really good control of that solar access through that window. So this is the heat recovery ventilation unit that supplies the fresh air to the house 24-7. The intake air is filtered and pulls heat from the outgoing extract air. At the same time the extract air is giving its heat up, it's also being filtered and exhausted outside. So while the system is not an air conditioner, in summertime it does give the benefit of hanging on to the cooth within your home. It's also worth remembering that the operational costs are significantly lower with an HRV using roughly the equivalent of a light globe's worth of electricity. So these two filters here enable us to filter the incoming and outgoing air. So this is actually what the filter looks like when we put it in. And this is a filter that I pulled out that had been installed for 150 days. We also have these great water tanks. And these water tanks actually help keep the house cool in the summer as well as warm in the winter. Most houses are built on a concrete slab but we have a fantastic tree right in the middle of the lot, which meant that our house had to be built on piers and it's built entirely out of wood. So we don't have thermal mass. We don't have a, a mass that's just gonna soak up heat when it's hot to keep the house cold and release that heat when the house is cold. But these water tanks here have about the same thermal mass as if we had a concrete slab underneath. So we have a 5.2 kilowatt solar panel array on the roof. We have a 17,000 liter rainwater tank outside that provides water to the washing machine and the toilets and gives us that extra sustainability aspect. As a result, we have a house that's very cheap to operate. It's really felt comfortable with an indoor air temperature between 20 and 25 degrees nearly all the time. But if it's nice outside, then we open up the windows and let the wind blow through the curtains. We might have been Sydney's first certified passive house, but we're not alone now, and hopefully it will become part of this new special normal that we're gonna live in.